Dr. Kathy McFarland. And I'm Mark Bobo, and welcome to the OSBA Forum. Kathy, it's good to have you back. It we is. missed you last yes, month. Yes, yes, I missed you guys. How'd it go? It went all right. Yeah, you know, yeah. our ratings didn't go down. I held it down. I held down the fort for us. So. Did he? Did yeah. he? They'll, they'll let me know, right? Yes. No, I heard you had a really great conversation with Capital yes. about building R relationships in regards to their teacher program and uh, growing your own. So that was a fantastic conversation. And what the uh, biggest takeaway was that there was ways they can duplicate that program in other districts. And so it was a really good conversation. So if they have further questions, if they want to revisit that, how do they do that? They will reach out directly to their, the information was given on the forum website. Perfect. Directly to all the Capital University experts. And so we're looking forward to that conversation and looking forward to another great conversation today. Um, as always, we're delighted to bring the OSBA forum to you. Your association is committed to keeping you informed of the happenings within public education. And today's discussion pertains to the partnership between education and industry. As we all know, the unemployment rate is low, yet there are many opportunities for gainful employment available to our students. So really, the question comes down to how can we prepare our students for the work industry of today and the future? And Kathy, we brought some experts in here today to yeah. talk about this subject. Who do we have? We have. Thanks, Mark. So today, we are welcoming Christy Bertullo, CEO and co-founder of Bridge Ed and Unite. Unite is a consulting, training, and technology company developed to help unite universities and industry partnerships. Bridge Ed is a consulting company helping K-12 districts bridge the gap with companies while providing opportunities and exposure to career paths for teachers, parents, and students. We also have Mandy Medvi. Um, she's the head of talent acquisition at Forge Biologics, which is a cell and gene therapy developer and manufacturer here in Columbus. Well, mm -hmm. right. Mandy brings two decades of broad-based recruiting and proven leadership experience in staffing, ex executive search, and corporate recruiting, working for both multinational Fortune 100 companies and startup organizations within the healthcare industry. And probably one of my favorite all-time visitors, we have Aaron Cook, because he is a practitioner. We have an educator with us today, who is currently is Delaware City Schools Director of Secondary Education. In his role, Aaron supports building principals and teachers, collaborate with district administrators to implement the strategic plan, provide professional development for the district, manage college credit plus program, directly supporting district and state assessments, Leading, he's the leading administrator for the Will Alternative Learning Program and supervises services for students who are identified as gifted English learners and homeless. That is a big job description. description. Yeah. But I'm excited that we have all three of them joining us today. Welcome, so welcome. let's get started with yep. some questions. If you have questions for us, we'll just go back and forth. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Aaron, this one's for you. What are the challenges you face regarding career exploration with your students, teachers, and parents? I think letting our, our teachers, our parents, and our students understand how the workforce is changing, um, kind of getting past old perceptions of what career readiness may look like, um, letting them know that there are multiple on and off ramps to careers. We don't have to think about these as silos that I'm just going to be a four-year college educated student or I'm just going to go to a two-year school or I'm going to go to the military. There are ways to weave these all in and out of each other. So um, it, it is educating our staff, educating our students, and educating our families. I, I will say that as an administrator, um, which has been five or six years, everybody was going to college. Yeah. We're all going to college. And it really seems like that has changed. Um, almost like the perception of, like you said, there's all kinds of different ways to get to wherever you want to go. And it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to look one way. And I always said to my parents, if your students are at home stressed out about going to college, it might not be a best, the best choice right. for them. So right. um, what are you doing to solve these challenges? You said that you know, opening those lines of communication, um, educating them. Yeah, so we're very fortunate in Delaware. We have a, a great relationship with our Chamber of Commerce. We have a great relationship with our, our Main Street Board and our city government. Um, and, and people want to come into um, our buildings and, and talk to our students, talk to our families. And, and so we're blessed with that. Uh, it is finding those connections and not letting the ball drop because we might be in the room right then and there and the, the conversation's going great, but then how do we follow up and follow through to make plans um, that we can execute and get those companies and individuals 
in our classrooms or at our parent-teacher conference nights where families are coming into the buildings? How do we not just focus on high school education because that seems the immediate need because the kids are getting ready to walk out of our doors in a few years, um, but how do we get that exploration started at the middle school? How do we build down um, to our elementary even to, to start to provide them with experiences and what's out there? So often students know what their parents do. They see what happens in education on a daily basis or what their friends' parents do. But how do we um, build out further so that they're hearing all the various facets of, of what jobs are taking off and what's really out there so that we're not pigeonholing students into specific jobs? Can you provide some examples to our membership about time? Where do you find the time to have them come into the classroom or, you know, I think teachers often push back and say, hey, I have all these other things over right. here I need to, to get through. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice or experience that you can share with our membership in regards to how do you, how do you get them in the building and, and find the time and space? Time has definitely been one of the challenges um, and, and how, do, how do we keep that moving? I think that's one of the reasons, I know we're going to hear from Christy at Bridge Ed, and, and how do we keep the conversation going? And for example, uh, two weeks, week, two weeks ago, we were having a meeting with our teachers and building administrators and providing the various opportunities that are going to be out there. Um, and we had teachers from uh, the STEM fields to um, business to um, career-related um, exploratory classes that we have to family consumer science and giving them a direct pipeline to a point person that, hey, when you're talking about X, Y, or Z, we can then go to one of our industry partners or our chamber and connect you with somebody that can come into your classroom versus you trying to who should I reach out to right. at PPG or at Performance Automotive um, to get the right person in so that we can help streamline that conversation. Um, th those are the pieces that have been actionable. We also recently rolled out with the Chamber uh, C4 program. Uh, we have about 25 students between Delaware City Schools and Buckeye Valley that once a month, every month, are um, going out to visit um, an industry field, learn about it, get some hands-on experiences, um, interact with people um, in talent acquisition to people that are working in the field and getting that wide variety of experiences, then by the end of the year they're going to walk away with um, an Ohio Means Job Readiness Seal. So it is multifaceted yeah. and just um, always talking the talk. I have monthly meetings with our middle school and high school building principals. So just staying on that conversation, reminding them that, hey, we have this partnership. We have these industry partners in our community. What are we doing? So it's, it's keeping that conversation really going and finding avenues that we can kind of maximize time and not add one additional thing. Right. So it sounds like having a key person on your district team mm -hmm. that oversees and pulls those threads together is really important. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hearing a lot about communication and collaboration to make sure that conversation keeps going. When, when you talk to the administrators about that, uh, how, how do you frame it so, again, that it's part of the fabric of what they're doing versus, as you said, that another additional thing? Yeah, so we've really, really talked about, for example, our high school principal sends out a weekly memo to, to parents every week. How can we, every other memo or at least once a month be sending something out either what we're doing with bridge ed or something related to college and career readiness uh, how can when we send um, memos out to all of our staff how can we be consistently providing information about those career readiness opportunities that are out there for our students um, it is trying to wrap around say it as loud as possible from yeah. the top of the stairs and <laughs> continue to say it. Yeah. I sometimes feel like I'm a broken record, um, but I just have to remember the more you hear it, the more you're going to remember it. Definitely, right. definitely. Well, Mandy, let me ask you from a business and industry perspective, what's happening here in the state of Ohio that's uh, encouraging businesses to more collaborate and engage with K-12 districts? Well, I think a lot of it is just the competitive landscape is changing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at Central Ohio alone, and there's so many companies that are coming to Columbus or coming to Ohio. And I know for us in particular, 
biotech is an emerging industry. Um, then you have other, like Intel coming into the market, Amgen coming into the market, um, other tech companies. So there's only a finite pool of talent. So we need to really focus on, we've always focused on college recruiting, university relationships, but now we need to really take that down a level and build awareness to students, parents, teachers that students can go to college and they can get a degree in science, but they don't have to go off and be a doctor. There's a lot of other options that they can pursue. Yeah. Um, or they don't have to go get a four-year degree. I mean, we have a lot of entry-level positions where they come in at Forge. We have a really strong like training program that they go through. So we can train them on specific skills. They can come, you know, there's a lot of different pathways that they can move internally. They can, we have um, tuition reimbursement. So if they do decide that they want to return to college at some point in time, that's an option as well. But it's really just increasing awareness right. and increasing just the pool of talent here yeah. locally. It, it really is dispelling the myth that the pathway is only singular or silo a certain way. Exactly. There's many ways we can have success for our students and, and making that exposure available. I think that's really wonderful. So I have to ask this though, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing as you work to engage uh, in uh, business and K-12? What challenges are you seeing in the midst of that? Well, I think honestly, the thing that has made it easy for us is partnering with Bridge Ed um, because some of these districts are so big and so complex and you don't even know how to navigate or who to go to. So, um, so Bridge Ed has been a great facilitator and they have offered us a lot of different options on how we can get involved um, and identify some good opportunities because they know our organization well. Um, so I think that's been really beneficial and made it easy on us because we are, we're past the startup. Forge is only three years old. So we're a very young company. We're growing quickly. We're in this sort of like hyper growth mode. So we're also going a million miles an hour. So just having that, that bridge. Um, <laughs> good. That's really, that's <laughs> good. really helpful because um, we don't have a lot of like internal resources to manage that on our own. No, it sounds like the partnership really helps oh, it's, yes. to navigate this. Well, Christy, yeah. as, as we talk about the great things that Bridge Ed is doing, let me ask, are there particular industries that seem to be more engaged with the K-12 process? Yeah, so I think the trades, construction, manufacturing, we've seen this for the last 20, 30 plus years um, because they felt that, even what you mentioned earlier, they right. felt that push of everyone saying, no, you're going to college. So they have been actively engaging. What we're starting to see is more emerging industries um, like healthcare coming into the space. Of, um, we know that there's a nursing shortage, but there are hundreds of other types of jobs and professions within healthcare. So how do you start to increase that awareness piece that it's more than just nurses and doctors? Right. Um, and then to Aaron's point that there are multiple on and off ramps. Mm -hmm. um, if that is a career path of your choice or um, an industry of your choice. Um, same thing we're seeing with um, demystifying some careers. A lot of financial services companies are needing to come out more as a tech company. Um, so they might see that students are kind of looking at them as, well, I don't want to be a banker, but it's actually, we're hiring, J.P. Morgan Chase is hiring probably more data technologists yeah. yes. than they are actually people in you know, a banking branch. Mm -hmm. So it's really helping to demystifying mm -hmm. that. So I think we're seeing um, here in Ohio, all of our industries, and we are very industry diverse in Ohio as well. Um, so I think we're we're starting to see more and more see the power and understanding that they need to um, increase their awareness mm -hmm. for the students, um, so that they kind of see what those opportunities might look like. That demystifying that you talked about, have you seen the students be more receptive to that messaging? Have they been open to looking at companies that may have? been known for one thing, but actually offer something else as an opportunity. Yes, there was a construction company recently that was um, in a high school, and that was one of the things that the student reported on after. They said, well, I didn't realize what marketing and using a, um, shoot, now I forget what the word is, the flying thing. A drone, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I almost yeah. 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 We're going to have to add that. <laughs> So that, yeah. was, that was something that was really exciting for them because they would have never thought about construction. Right. 
Right. But then when they learn that there are so many different opportunities within yeah. that one spot. And that's so powerful, right? Yeah. You know, to, for a child to see that there's opportunity, maybe they didn't see that before. Right. That, that, changes, that could potentially change the trajectory of that child's life. So exactly. I, I think that's great. I think it's great. So tell me, uh, Aaron, last seven months you've been working with Bridget. Yeah. Tell us about that experience, what that's been like for you. I like to hear the victories, but also tell me some of the challenges in these past seven months. Yeah. Um, Bridge Ed, it's been a tremendous uh, working relationship, truly a partnership um, that has allowed us to navigate uh, this field uh, in a more seamless fashion. Uh, it has, um, the, you get so immersed in something um, when you're tasked with a project and keeping everybody abreast, especially in the early stages when not a lot is happening about what's going on, whether it's our fabulous superintendent, Heidi Kegley, who embraces this work, keeping her in the know so that when she sees people in the community, she's sharing that, keeping our high school team in the know. But we've been able to um, secure seven industry partners, um, further strengthen our relationship with our Delaware County Chamber of Commerce. And um, now we're kind of to that stage of we need to execute. We've done a lot of planning, not that there's um, more to do, but we have a state of the workforce event coming up um, on October 4th. And I talked earlier about finding those seamless ways to maximize time. That's a parent-teacher conference night. Um, yeah. If you've been in education, parent-teacher conference night at high schools, not as many parents go, be, right. there's athletics, there's band, there's music, mm -hmm. there's drama. Our parents get pulled in a number of different directions. But having the synergy of a state of the workforce event with five of those um, industry partners that will be there to talk to our parents and students, and not just our high school parents and students, but our middle school and elementary and our staff members will already be there to hear the message as, as well. Um, so that's one of those synergy points. We're gonna have some externships um, at the end of October for our teachers to actually go out and experience and see what these companies are looking for, um, whether that's straight out of high school or what type of degrees they want students to get or what technical certificates they want students to get so that they can go back. Our parents and our students lean a lot on our teachers and our counselors and our principals for information. So if we can get that in front of our teachers, and once again, that's a we, we have a teacher work day at the end of October, so we're fusing that in to a teacher work day as professional learning. So I think it's examples like that where we've taken things um, and the monthly communication with our district that we have with Bridge Ed, and then they turn around and have a monthly conversation with those industry and community partners so that everybody's staying on the same page and, and, and a ball's not getting dropped or somebody's not feeling left out or forgotten that we're staying on message and constantly uh, spinning that record over and over again. So so explain to me what, what do you provide? So, so our audience out there, <laughs> audience out there, can understand what does it look like when you work yeah. with, a, with a district. What what do you do? So as you heard when you were reading Aaron's bio, mm -hmm. he has about mm -hmm. fifteen <laughs> things <laughs> right <laughs> under <laughs> under his title, um, and you see that at a lot of districts. Yes. So then you throw on, well, where do you start with career pathways? So that's what we come in, and we are able to be an extension of the district's team. Um, to help to carry these initiatives forward and to build a sustainable practice too within their organization. So we come in, we really understand what the priorities of the district are, what they're trying to accomplish, and then we find companies that fit those priorities. So for instance, how you know Mandy shared the work that we've done um, with her organization is really understanding what schools make the most sense, what they're able to, to do, and what they might not be able to do. Uh, for Delaware and Buckeye Valley, pre-apprenticeships is very important with them. Um, that isn't a place right now where Forge focuses, so that might not be a good match to start to hit those priorities. So we really understand the priorities of both, and then we work on how do we then implement these throughout the school, so building internal teams to be able to um, execute on these tactics. And then as um, Aaron said, I think most importantly, we keep those relationships 
relationships going. Yeah. Everyone has great meetings. How do you turn a great meeting into action? Mm -hmm. And so that's what our job is. Our job is to take these great conversations to be able to cre create it into an actionable plan and then be able to help the school execute it um, on behalf of their district and then also with the business community. Now, do you ever talk to teachers about what they're teaching? For instance, I was an English teacher, five paragraph essay. Do you do professional development around some of the different types of math that the kids are going to need to use and the different types of writing? Because that's where I would say the rub comes in, right? Mm -hmm. We have testing, we have mm -hmm. curriculum we're supposed to follow. Now you're, now you're coming in and, and saying, I need to change. Do, do you feel that rub at all? Um, you know, don't I don't want the, I don't want the industry to come into the schoolhouse and tell us how to teach mm -hmm. or what to teach. I we haven't experienced yeah. that with our districts that we've worked with, but we're we're really looking at where are those synergies that we can actually make mm -hmm. those those connections with um, industries and, and career readiness and. So we're starting off with, with the classes and, and the areas of where it makes sense. We're not at this point coming in to, hey, we're going to revamp how we're teaching kids to write. Um, we, we have certain mandated math curricula we have to do with algebra, geometry, and algebra 2. The state's getting a little more creative with piloting some additional math pathways based upon um, as we look at what industry needs and what colleges are looking for, that this need of Algebra 2 for all might not continue to need to be a thing. There might be other, whether it's probability and statistics pathways, computer science pathways that make more sense than still provide a great mathematical foundation. But those are kind of next steps. We're trying to find um, the points that make for easy yet valuable inroads right. to yeah. maximize um, the outcomes. And I, and I think that's really beneficial what I heard you say, but also that you all are making sure that the companies fit the vision and mission of the said district. Mm -hmm. You know, as we, our membership, we have rural, we have urban, mm -hmm. there, every type of district is here in the state of Ohio. Right. So I think that's very important that our membership here, we're going to try to fit what fits your vision and mission yeah. and try to find those type of companies that, that, that work there. So I think that's important. All right, Mandy, back to script. Here we go. What are some specific tactics Forge Biologics has deployed within K-12 schools because of your partnership with Bridget? We have done a, a variety of different things. Um, one is the teacher externship, is which we were just talking about. And it's bringing teachers on site um, for a couple hours to our facility and really just introducing them to Forge, the industry, giving them very high, like a tour, an overview of what we do. So that way they can find ways to maybe weave it into their curriculum or build awareness around, um, around biotech. We go into classrooms and do speaking or engagement. So it could be around different career opportunities about the industry. Um, so we've done a variety of, of those. Um, we've even gone in and done like in, at the middle school and elementary level, we'll do different like science experiments. So it's kind of a fun way to introduce them to science. And um, and then we also have, uh, we do have like an intern, like a mini internship for some high school students. Actually, that will be kicking off here in the next couple weeks. So it will be September, basically this semester, where they'll come um, once a week to forge and we will give them you know, we have a whole um, training, different like learning opportunities and programs set up for them. So, uh, so yeah, there's a lot of different, or we're going on site to the schools and like career days and just different events as well. I knew there was a huge decrease during COVID. Yes. I talked to a lot of teachers that weren't able to get their students into mm -hmm. these internships because of course everything was kind of shut down. So it's good to hear that uh, we're opening back up and giving these students because I always say you might not find what you love but you might find what you don't love yes. yeah. <laughs> when you have an experience like that, so. uh, okay Christy how can k-12 districts better engage with the business community and what can they do to prepare to do that yeah so I think there's kind of three things that a district should look at when they're thinking around um, better engagement with the business community and the first is really defining their why. Um, what are they looking to accomplish with this program? Um, and then next, defining that strategy. So what are our 
year one, year three, year five year goals look like, and then how are we going to implement and focus? Because we, we often can't boil the ocean. There are a lot of initiatives, a lot of things we need to be doing. So being able to focus on, maybe it is high school near term, and then we're going to build this down to the middle school, then get into elementary, but being intentional around that. And then finally, um, understanding your resources. Um, one of the things that we heard from every superintendent we've worked with is they have said, I don't want to add another thing to anyone's plate. So how do we make things easier for them? Um, for some schools, they have the resources. They can hire a person for this to be kind of their full-time job. Many districts can't do that. Um, so I think really understanding your resources, you know, using an uh, intermediary like, you know, Bridge Ed or other organizations that might be able to assist with this or being able to kind of build that cohort collaboration team. Um, but just kind of understanding what those resources look like so that this isn't just another initiative that, you know, dies off in two years when right. people don't think about it anymore. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is here to stay. Um, and so I think that the more intentional districts can, can be about it, the better. And, you know, we're going to be able to start to see um, the strengthening of some of these programs. Christy, Aaron, Mandy, thank you for being here today with us at the OSB Forum. Really appreciate the work that you're doing certainly for the students that you're serving in the districts. Thank you uh, for your commitment. So Kathy, as always, I get stirred up when I hear about opportunities uh, for students because I realize this opportunity and things like this can actually change the life of a student. So this is, this is pretty awesome. So. What I love is that students are starting to learn, you know, if they want to get into healthcare. When I grew up, you were either a doctor or a nurse. That was it. And now I think with these experiences, they see how comprehensive these industries are and that there's really a place for everyone out yes. there to do what they're passionate about. So um, I just encourage our members to, to get a hold of us. Uh, we can be a great resource. We can connect you with people that are, are doing the great work. So we thank our membership for your leadership in your local communities. If there's any way that our OSBA team can help you, please contact us. We're here as your resource to you, our membership. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you. Oh, you don't know the date. <laughs> we'll see you next month. Take care. Thanks.